we can get started? Yes. Yeah? So, yes. So for the ceviche, um, the trick is, number one trick, is has to be ocean fish. You cannot use lake fish. It has to be ocean, preferably white fish. You can pick mostly any fish you want, as long as it's from the ocean, it's white. Uh, typically, I'll either pick mahi-mahi or tilapia. Uh, both of them are pretty tender, pretty light, pretty white fish, and they're very easy to work on. Do you suppose we, in Wisconsin we could use bluegills or walleye freshly caught? I've never tried. But why not? Mm -hmm. It's white meat, it's yeah. white flesh. You could. Okay. You, How you, many of you are going to do that? <laughs> walleye? <laughs> okay, go ahead, Andres. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose perch might work. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, first to start with, what we're going to do is dice the fish. Um, and depending how tough the fish is and how fast you want it to, to cook, per se, right? So a smaller piece of fish is going to cook faster, but it's also going to lo lose a lot more texture to the lime juice. So depending what kind of fish it is, you might get a feel for what size to cut it into. You might want to go half inch by half inch or maybe inch by inch, somewhere in between that. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. The ugly parts of the fish, if you will, the stuff that might have veins or discoloration or might be a little tougher, you want to cut out, but we don't throw them out. We'll set them aside because we're going to use them for something else later on. Uh, so we'll cut the fish. Um, I suppose I don't have to cut all of this, but... It must, and it cuts more easily if it's par partially frozen. Correct. Otherwise, you know, cutting fish slips around. So we're going to save some of these uh, small ugly pieces. I'm going to put them over here. And then the nicer looking stuff that I want to use, I'm going to put on a different bowl. And you want to salt it right away before I'll you do anything salt. else to it. I have some salt okay. out here. Um, and, and the reason for that is that once the lime juice hits the fish, it cures the skin. So the flavor of everything else that you want to put on it won't go in it. Right? Mm -hmm. You won't. It'll taste okay, but you get a better taste if you do all the seasoning before you do your uh, lime. So we'll just put some salt on it. Uh, and this is still a little frozen, so. Don't worry, this is the demo. We have some already <laughs> completed. Yeah, there's more. <laughs> you don't all have to share this piece. Um, and then we're gonna get some cilantro and chop it very finely. And what we wanna do with the cilantro on top of the color or on top of the flavor is give the fish some, some color and some personality, right? Because otherwise the fish is just plain white fish. It doesn't look like much. Uh, so the cilantro and then um, the pepper, which I believe I have somewhere. The red here. pepper? It's right here. Yep. Uh, the cilantro and the pepper, you want to pick. Uh, obviously the cilantro is going to be green. You want to pick a pepper that has a lot of color. Yellow is typically not a good choice because it blends in with the fish. So you want to do something red. Um, usually I opt for, this is from my garden, uh, this is Ooh. called rocoto, it's a Peruvian type of pepper that is pretty spicy. Um, That's not the one we put in the what? The, 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 the bigger bowl has uh, red bell pepper in it yep. for color. So there's some of the spicy uh, pepper on the sauce. Okay. But the, the fish itself has a lot of red pepper because the, the taste of this might be a little bit... Uh, Can I taste a little bit? Yeah. Let's see how hot and how brave I am. I used to eat it like fire. Now that I'm getting older, fire doesn't agree as much. So I oh. will tell you a little... Uh, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> if there's any other takers, I have plenty. Um, so <laughs> bring the milk. Bring the milk. Bring sure, the milk. No. Do you? Sure. He loves spicy. Yep. Everyone, Josh, our program coordinator. When I was 50, I could eat a jalapeno. <laughs> now that I'm 80, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> so. Okay, Josh. What do you think? <laughs> It's good, okay. <laughs> so if, if any of you is interested in having some pepper, let me know. I can get you some seeds through Emily. Um, so now we're going to mix the uh, fish, the pepper, the salt on the bowl with the cilantro. And just to 
give it give it a good appearance, right? We're gonna mix everything together, so the salt goes in it. We're gonna mix the pepper and the cilantro, and and both of those are mainly to give it some color and give it some nice aroma, nice smell to it. We're gonna set that aside, and we're gonna work on what is the the sauce. On top of the lime juice, we make a lime juice type of sauce that has a lot more flavor to it than just the lime. Um, otherwise, it'll be a little sour. So to do that, we go to the blender and we use the ugly scraps of the fish that we had. We're gonna throw some of those in. Ugly and scraps, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. that Not very appetizing. It well. We're gonna throw in a small piece of ginger. We're gonna throw a couple of celery sticks and we're gonna throw in some cilantro and some more spicy pepper. So now depending on how you want it, you might wanna throw in some jalapeno or some habanero or some other kind of pepper, any kind of pepper that you might have available to you. Um, and then what we're gonna do is throw some ice in the mix and that is to keep everything fresh and also to give it some liquid, right? We'll give some liquid to the mixture. And we're gonna blend this for we're gonna blend this for a little bit and we have already done this and this needs to be um, strained because you don't want the chunks of the vegetables in there what we want to get is get the juice alternatively if you want to you can mull it try to get the juices that way but you always want to strain it you don't want to get any of the actual raw vegetables into the fish uh, especially the ginger, is kind of, it's nice for flavor, but if you get a chunk of ginger and you bite on it, you'll notice right away. Um, so after that is done, we're gonna make some um, onions, which I already have prepared here. So, but the trick is you wanna cut the onion, you wanna take the heart out of the onion and then thinly slice the onion. So you don't want any big chunks that are gonna have the typical onion taste to it, right? That is a little overpowering, that is a little bit bitter. You'll you see the thinly sliced onions when we bring out the finished ceviche. You'll see them. Yeah. Um, and then, so I have some here that you can, you can see how thinly we have sliced them. Now, the other trick to get some of the flavor out of the onion and make them more tasty, more appealing, we soak them in cold, salty water. So oh, salty water. Cold, not, salty water. Okay. That right. would add some more flavor. Right. And you don't want to use hot water because if you do, then the onion cooks and it loses the flavor and it loses the texture, right? We want that crunchiness on the onion that is going to go well with the fish. Uh, so now, once we have done, and I'm not do going to do it here because uh, we don't have a good strainer. Once we have done this, we're going to strain this. We're going to add it to the fish. And on top of that, we're going to add lime juice to it and some of the onions that have already been cut and soaked in lime and we're going to let it sit there for about 15 to 20 minutes depending on what kind of fish it is um, you have to keep an eye on the fish right now this fish is pretty pink you're going to see when the big plate of fish comes out the fish is going to be white yep it, white so that's going to be your indication that the fish is cured. It's going to change colors and it's also going to change texture and firmness. So on the bowl to plate the ceviche, you're going to put a, a bed of lettuce, if you will, on the plate and then we'll put the ceviche on top and that's... The lettuce really is not meant to be eaten, but it's more of a, a visual to make, again, add some color to the plate, make it more appealing and and not make it too uh, bland from an appearance standpoint. Ceviche, raw fish. Ceviche, raw fish with salt. The most basic ceviche you can make. Fish, salt, and lime, and that's it. Three ingredients. But you're making fancy ceviche. Right. Okay. Right. And, and, and the ceviche really goes back historically to the fishing communities, right? When, when the fisher, uh, fishermen, people fishing historically were on the boat, the only thing they had was fish and salt water. Yeah, go ahead. Can you add small raw shrimp? You can, but it cannot be raw. Oh. So this is a curiosity. The lime only cooks fish. It doesn't cook any other ah. seafood. So yes, you can add whatever you want, but typically you want to 
pan fry it or do something to it for a few minutes. So even a, a little, few, few little boiled shrimp thrown in at the end. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. And and if you go to a ceviche restaurant, you can get a, a variety of uh, seafood. Uh, you can get squid, you can get mussels, you can get uh, shrimp. Are they? But they have to be cooked separately also. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah, they have to be cooked separately. The lime juice will not cure that kind of it's anything just a other fish, than fish. Not shellfish. Yeah. Gotcha. Great question. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, are there restaurants in Wisconsin that this fish? And um, there. <laughs> so personally, the ones I've been to, there's one in Milwaukee, Milwaukee. called uh, Chef Pass, which is actually in West Dallas. P A S P A C P A C Yeah, and she is Peruvian. She's from the rainforest. I'm not sure how long she's been in Milwaukee, but she has a full menu of Peruvian food. Chef Pass P A C P A C as in zebra, and that's her last name. Z C as in zebra. Zebra, not yep. C as in cow. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank goodness um, we keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, just a minute. Yep, Chef Pass, P-A-C-S in Zebra. There is a, one in Madison for sure. Josh might know the name. It oh, used yeah. to be called Inca Heritage, but that closed and changed names. Downtown Madison? Yeah, okay. There was one on State Street. Yeah, and there is one more in Milwaukee that I've never been to. I believe it's called Seabass. Maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, there's plenty of restaurants in the Milwaukee Madison area that would make this. So, we've given them lots of information on ceviche. And how many people are going to eat ceviche other than today? <laughs> oh, a few. Yep. Yeah, a few. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Do you like it frozen or fresh? I've done both. Yeah, the frozen is a little bit easier to handle at the very stages of the prep. So if you have a frozen piece of fish and you move it from the freezer to the fridge the night before, the morning off, it'll be thawed enough that it's easy to handle, but still it, stiff enough that it's easier to cut, right? And, and by I the time you put the salt in and you leave it out a little bit, it'll, it'll finish. Uh, and I think in Wisconsin, the so-called fresh fish that we find at the stores are simply frozen fish that they've thawed. So I always buy it frozen because the fishermen on the ocean, they catch it, they freeze it on the boat, and that's as fresh as you're going to get, rather than thawed at the grocery store. That's my personal take. When would you typically make ceviche? Like, what type of event or time of year? Um, I mean, it's typically a summer, summer dish. Like a picnic, like midday? Yeah, yeah, it's typically a, a lunch, a lunch summer dish, right? You rarely would make this for dinner. It's... It's always served cold, it's not a hot dish, so odds of having it in the winter are pretty slim. Restaurants have it year-round, right? That's the, their specialty. If you go to Peru, you go to a ceviche restaurant, right? They rarely make anything else. Their specialty is ceviche and seafood. You won't find meat, you won't find chicken, you won't find anything else. They're experts on this stuff. Okay. Um, any other questions? Today, uh, tilapia. Um, otherwise, I have used mahi mahi and I have used flounder as well. Just the, either of the three works well depending on what's available at the store. Go ahead. No, I do all my fishing at the grocery store. I'm not a, <laughs> my hunting too. I'm not. <laughs> I like being outdoors, but I don't fish and I don't hunt, so. <laughs> and you can see here the ceviche that we've had resting on the lime juice for about 20 minutes now. And the color of it, it's, it's already way different than what we started with. It's a lot wider, the texture is a lot firmer. So that's your indication that the fish is ready to go. And on here, again, we've mixed it with cilantro. We put a bell pepper on it to give it some color, some personality. And we threw some of the onions on top of it. Uh, so when we serve it, we'll plate it over a bed of lettuce. You want me to put that on here? 
No, usually we put this on the bowl oh, and then you okay. would put a scoop of, so everybody would gotcha. get a, a piece of lettuce, gotcha. hopefully. Right. So we'll put that over here. Um, I don't believe we need the blender anymore. No, we don't. Uh, so now we can do the chicken? Do the chicken, yes. Okay. So now we're going to do actually the third dish I talk about is the, the chicken dish. It's ají de gallina, it's called. Um, and for this fish, probably the night before or maybe the morning off, you want to cook some uh, chicken breast, just on water with some... Um, Celery, carrot, and salted water. Thank you. Uh, just like a chicken soup, yeah. you know. And we want to save the broth from that. After the chicken is cooked, we want to pull it off, let it cool for a little bit, and then shred it. You can shred it by hand. You can put it on a food processor as long as you get small pieces out of it. And now we're going to reserve that chicken. The sauce is made from bread. So go to the store. I typically buy whatever store brand it is of a loaf Wo of bread. Wonder right? bread style. Exactly. <laughs> And what we want to do with the bread is take off the crust, uh, mainly because it, it gives the dish not as good as an appearance because you can see the crumbs, they don't blend very well. And usually kids don't like them, so we I get rid of the crust. I had some children at my house this week, and of course they don't eat the ends and they don't eat the crust. So I, <laughs> we cut them into strips and we soak them in butter, we roll them in sugar and bake them in the oven. My, it was tasty. That's a great idea. Sugar sticks. Well, we should try that at home. Yeah. Because I'm usually the one eating the caps and the, <laughs> yeah, right. and the ends and yeah, everything else is, at home. Which is, I think, right? the best part is the, the end of the loaf. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. Um, so we're going to soak the bread after we've removed the crust. We're going to soak it on some of the broth. And that we're going to do so it's easier to blend and easier to handle later on. Uh, on top of that, we're going to chop up some onion. Just chop it very finely like you would on a food processor. Um, we have the shredded chicken. And we're going to need also some garlic. Um, here are two things that you may or may not find everywhere. This is called yellow pepper. It's a Peruvian pepper. Um, I have a plant at home. It hasn't produced anything yet, so it's the first year I try growing it. Typically, I'm able to get this at the Mexican stores. Uh, La Conquistadora in town will typically carry it. Um, so this is a, I would say, fairly hot pepper. It's not as hot as, as the one you had. Yeah. but. I wouldn't put a scoop of this in a sandwich, right? I typically would water it down with something else. But we'll use it for cooking this. And the other thing is uh, turmeric, which I think is more readily available. Yeah. But this is mainly for color. So we turn the white bread into a more of a yellowish, try to give it this appearance, right? The original color of what the pepper was. Uh, so in order to do that, on a saucepan of some sort, we're going to brown the onion first with a little bit of oil. And then we have the onion already chopped up. We have the bread already chopped up. And with the bread, typically what I'll do, I'll blend the bread just to get it to be more like a paste. Um, you don't have to blend it. If you work it enough in the pot, it'll get that texture that you need. Mushy. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. We want it to be almost like a puree of some sort, right? Almost okay. like mashed potato type uh, texture. And then we're going to put some um, walnuts and some evaporated milk on okay. it as well. Okay. Walnuts and evaporated milk and Wonder Bread. To make it creamy. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> It, at the end of the day, it's a pretty simple Sure. It's, it's a just, pretty simple dish. We would not dish. think of putting soaked Wonder Bread, walnuts, and evaporated milk together with chicken. With chicken. And who knows where the idea came from, right? That one, I don't know. No. Well, you could make up a story, and it might be true. Yeah. I'm guessing it might be similar to bread pudding that somebody had bread left over and soaked it. added chicken. Well, I just saw a recipe. No, no, it was 
oh gosh, what was it? Something, and then they added condensed, oh, it was corn and bacon, like makechu, but they added condensed milk to it. So I'm going to try that Sunday for the family. Who knows? Condensed milk and corn and bacon. So what, what we want to do is get the onion uh, nice and brown and soft. We don't really want to burn it. We just want to give it some color and give it some texture, just soften it. Uh, so we'll let the onion cook on here for a couple of minutes and just plain vegetable oil. You can use any kind of oil you want, peanut oil or olive oil. I don't know what else is out there. Lard. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon drippings. So once we have the onion mostly browned, we're going to add a little bit of uh, garlic and we're going to work that into the mix. Nice aroma. Yeah, we, you said that would give a good aroma. A and that it away. is a good aroma. Um, once you get those two nice and soft, we can add a little bit of uh, the yellow pepper. And that is going to depend again on how hot you want this thing to be, right? Yellow pepper paste. Yellow pepper paste. Hot yellow pepper paste. And you can actually smell the pepper. It's. It I can hear. Can anybody out there smell it? Oh, you can. Good. Good. You can almost smell how hot it is, right? Like. And that's the bread. And on top of that, we're going to add the bread and work the bread into it. Now, on this, once you add the bread, we want to water it down with some of the chicken broth. And the risk here is that the bread is going to burn at the bottom of the pan, right? So you want to turn down the heat and you want to constantly move this. And the secret is when you put the bread in, it smells like bread, right? You start cooking the bread and you can get a smell of bread. You have to cook it until the smell of bread goes away. So the bread is already cooked, but yeah, right. and I guess if you ask my mom or my grandma, they can probably tell you why the smell goes away. I don't know. I just know that <laughs> I just know that we work the puree over a medium heat until the smell goes away. And it smells like a new food. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And every once in a while, you want to check the level of broth. And if you need additional broth because it's drying up, you can throw broth in there. Uh, it's usually better than have it too wet than to have it too dry. Sure. Because it's going into the chicken anyway. Yeah. And that's a good point. The chicken will soak up some of the water sure. once you put it in there. In August, we'll be at, back at uh, Kiwanis Field House. We'll be doing zucchini. And what else? Well, a couple of things. I don't know exactly what will be in abundance at the end of August, because that will be the unknown ingredient. But you know by the end of August, we're going to have zucchini, zucchini, zucchini. We'll make zucchini burgers, not zucchini bread. You've all made zucchini bread and zucchini muffins for 40 years. We're not going to do that. We'll do other things with zucchini. Maybe we'll fry some, we'll see. And then I've been saving all my peelings and garlic, extra garlic and old herbs and I'll make, well I'll show you how to make stock in front of you. And then it'll be stock and the unknown and zucchini burgers and I don't know what else. But it'll be good. 
Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yes, I've got my reputation. It's better taste good. <laughs> so now that the bread is mostly cooked and the smell has gone away, I'm going to add a little bit more broth to thin out the mix and I'm going to add the turmeric. And this is something that you're going to have to add by eye depending on how much color you want. This really doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. Uh, if you did put a lot of the pepper in there, the pepper is going to give the bread flavor, so the turmeric is not as necessary. But if you didn't have a lot of pepper in there to begin with, um, you might have to add a little bit more. And I'm, I'm guessing maybe a teaspoon or, or two will do the trick. When Lee and I had COVID last October, well, while we were waiting for our first booster, um, we both lost the sense of smell. And I, it got back in a week or two, but I always opened my cloves. Oh, I can smell the cloves, which I love to smell anyway. So now you have a, more of a sauce that has, has more of a puree texture to it because the bread has softened and now we've added the color, so the white color of the bread went away. And now we have a nicer yellower. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Chickeny color. Chickeny color. And when you get it to this point, what we're going to do is add the shredded chicken. And you can add as much chicken as you want, depending on what kind of ratio you want of chicken to sauce. And then we're just going to mix the chicken in. and warm it up at this point, right? Because everything is already cooked. Oil, onion, bread, and the seasonings. Mm -hmm. Have you put in the evaporated milk yet? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Not yet, that will go on at the end along with the walnuts. Wal oh yes, and walnuts, walnuts. And it is up to you if you want to put the walnuts in whole or if you want to blend them. Um, that way some of the crunchiness of the walnuts goes away. Yeah. Some people like smoother, some people like crunchier. Right. I'd put them in whole. But that's me. And one thing that we didn't add is salt and pepper, right? You can add those at the, at the very end of the process, uh, depending on what kind of flavor you're looking for. Yeah, Ooh. sometimes you do. I don't have any cheese today. No, but Wisconsin cheddar or what? Uh, Parmesan cheese usually. Parmesan, okay. Mm -hmm. Or some well, other kind of dry cheese. Sense. Yeah, right. So now we'll just sprinkle some walnuts on it and... And I guess I just want to plate this to give everybody a... Okay. An idea of how, what it looks like. Right, of like after we've mixed all the all the ingredients. Okay. So, hmm? Sure. Say the name of that again, Andres. Ají de gallina. Ají, ají de gallina. Mm -hmm. Oh, ají is... Ají, like pepper. Is this. This is ají amarillo. Exactly. Yellow pepper, ají gallina. Mm -hmm. Gallina is Gallina chicken. is hen. Right, hen. Right, yeah. right. But we're using chicken breast. We're using yeah, chicken. Right, right. I'm doing some Peruvian cooking now. <laughs> I'm putting the sliced onions in the bowl. I'm putting the cut up tomato in the bowl. I'm putting the... Oh, he's going to chop the cilantro. Yeah. I was going to put it in whole. We'll, we'll mince the cilantro. And what we're doing now is a small uh, onion tomato salad that we're going to serve with the pork sandwiches. Peruvian pulled pork. Peruvian pulled pork, that's it. Do you try it? This? Yeah. No, but Mary was alone. Oh. Um, <laughs> Steve, who's in the back there, his wife is Peruvian, so he's had, I 
he could get in a lot. And he was just saying that when he, whenever he has it in Lima, it's typically served with a few um, sides. Do you want to mention those? Um, well, I know it's served with rice and potatoes. The, the, the ají gallina? The garnishes. The garnishes. Eggs. Hard boiled eggs. Yeah, yeah, we have hard boiled eggs in the back. The go with, goes with what? With the chicken. The chicken, as okay. As a garnish. Okay. Um, and then sometimes there'll be also a piece of lettuce on there, right? Lettuce or some sort of green as a bed. Okay. Yep. Yes, and we do have olives and we have eggs. We have olives? Yeah, they're in a can. Okay. I don't think we open them. Okay. Um, so the salad. Um, this salad is for the sandwiches. It's just a small garnish that we're going to put on top of the pork before we close up the sandwich. Um, onions, tomatoes and a little bit of uh, minced cilantro just to give it some color and some flavor. In this we're going to season with uh, a little bit of salt and then a little bit of lime juice. A fancy schmancy Peruvian pulled pork sandwich. And we can probably mix all of that up now. Okay. Usually I would use my hands, but we're going to be cutting pork, so I'm keeping my gloves fairly dry. <laughs> so does anybody else have any other questions about the chicken? Thank you. Are we finished with the lime? I'm get, making some room for us. Uh, maybe. Maybe? Okay, we're definitely, with we're, the, the we're empty one, we're finished. Finished with so that. So we might need. And I guess if anybody is interested, you can see, I don't know how long we've been cooking, but you can, you can see the chicken or the fish has started to change color on us already. So some of the stuff that was very pink, and you can see how the, the thinner pieces have cooked or cured a little bit faster than the, than the other stuff. We're ready for the pork? Yeah. Okay. I guess I, I gotta go get my fish back. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, look at that. My grandfather, who lived to be 102, you've heard me talk about him many times, the one who, loves, who loved overripe bananas, also <coughs> ate a little bit of beef, a little bit of chicken, but most of the time it was pork. And the fattier, the better. 102. These are too small. Born in 1889. So this is the pork. Um, this is uh, pork tenderloin. Uh, you can use shoulder roasts, you can use butt roasts, you can use pretty much any part of the pork you want. By the way, butt roast has nothing to do with the back of the pig. It's the part up here that butts up against the shoulder roast. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can have a butt fry. A butt fry, yeah. Uh, so so with, the, with the pork, typically the fattier the better, because yeah. we want to release the grease, right? We want to release that lard that we're going to use later to fry this on. Um, I'm not going to do the whole cooking demonstration here because it takes about two hours to do. So what we would do the night before, we would take the pork that has been thawed, um, and I, this looked bigger before we cooked them. Well, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we season them again with a Peruvian pepper called panca pepper, right? It's very mild, it's similar to uh, paprika. It doesn't have a lot of heat to it, it has some flavor to it. So we're going to cover the pork with the, with the paprika, which is a red pepper. We're also going to cover it with minced garlic. And we're going to cover it with a little bit of cumin. And we're just going to smear it on the outside. If um, in this case, this pork had a, a fatty layer on it, right, which is the, mm -hmm. the lard. Yep. Or the, we're going to cut into it, and that's going to let some of that grease come through and get released uh, and some of the flavors to come out. We're going to let it sit overnight, and then the next day we're going to put it in a pot with about a cup and a half of just plain water. And 
lime juice. So about half a lime to a lime of lime juice in there. Uh, the lime is gonna make it a little bit more crunchy. And we're gonna let it cook on low heat. You're gonna wanna simmer it. So you're gonna cook it for about 30 minutes per side. So 30 minutes, turn it, 30 minutes. If you see that you're running out of water, you're gonna add more water to it. This boiling process is really gonna cook the meat through and soften it, right? Because we don't want the tough meat of the pork. Um, but then at the same time, what you're trying to do is to get the juices, the fat from the pork to start flowing out. So if this, the water evaporates, you're gonna have the lard come out of the pork and you're gonna be out of water and now you're gonna have a small amount of lard in the pot. Um, so it's something that you have to keep close attention to. You know, set the timer 30 minutes, then flip it around. If you need more water, add more water. Um, in about an hour into it, you're gonna wanna open the pot, turn the heat high to get the rest of the water to evaporate, and then just keep the lard in the pot. Um, and then you're gonna start hearing the typical uh, frying sound, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's no longer a boiling, but it's more like a deep fryer type sound to it. And at that point, all you have to do is turn it a few times and try to get the skin to get some color and get some texture to it. And then you're done. So usually if you go to a restaurant, you'll get a couple of pieces of pork, maybe on the bone, maybe not. If you do a shoulder roast, you'll have a bone and then it'll be served with either potatoes or corn or rice or some other type of, of side. Um, today we're gonna go do sandwiches. I like them. <laughs> um, and to do that, we're gonna serve these on a bun uh, with a little bit of the onion salad with tomatoes and, green and the green sauce. Yeah, so while Emily is getting the green sauce, we can start cutting this up. So we'll put the, the slices down because that's the fatty part. Okay. And then like this, okay. we can just, I mean, and this should fall apart, right? And I suppose I've never tried making pulled pork out of this, which I should try to. Mm -hmm. that, that business of cooking it in water and then it renders its own fat, that's sort of like doing browned potatoes in a large skillet with fat and water. And then you cook it until the water evaporates. By that time, the potatoes are done and then they brown in that leftover butter that's been in there all the time. And it works perfectly most of the time. <laughs> and then the other times, it sticks fiercely. Yeah. And this is why you have to be careful with this, right? Because some, some cuts of pork will not have enough fat to do the frying trick. Yeah. The shoulder um, and the butt are nice and fatty. What I like to do is after I'm done doing this, and I'll do it again today, I'll strain the lard and save it. Just throw it in the freezer. So the next time I need to do one of these, I'll scoop a couple of scoops of the lard from the freezer and put them in the pot when the water has evaporated. Otherwise, you can buy lard, right? Mm -hmm. You yep. can get a, a can of, right? what is it, Crisco or? Well, that, that's shortening, but lard will be Morel or Hormel. Any other brands besides Morel and Hormel? Those are the only two I can think of. Armor. Armor. That's right, Armor, yep. And mother always said one of them was better for pie crust than the other, but of course I don't know which one it was. Do you use that for pie crust, not yes. shortening? Some, I, yeah, I do. Okay. Because when I make empanadas, I usually use shortening, but maybe lard would be better. Sure, sure, I would think so. Ooh, look at these lovely chunks of yumminess. I, I won't eat it in front of you. Yeah. No, so there should be some that are really brown and really crunchy, oh, right? Oh, yes. And usually the cook gets those, but I didn't get any today. <laughs> okay, so while we keep um, slicing, how about Vicki or Emily, can you set up the buffet? Because this is, 
That is for the sandwiches. Okay, we'll have to start at that end. Start mm -hmm. with the ceviche, and then the chicky, and then the buns. Okay. Yeah, so this is more of a... Yeah, that we're not going to serve. That's the one for the sous chef, which is meat mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Oh, you're doing a great job with those. Well, let's... Emily, can you put the buns maybe on top of the stove so that they get the bun before they get to the sandwich? And maybe the ceviche down there and then the chicken. But, well, just use your, use your imagination. And as you go through, you're going to see two bowls of green sauce. Uh, the one closest to me, it's a little bit more spicy, mm -hmm. not by much. Like a medium. Like a medium. Thank you. And... Um, so that sauce is a mix of cilantro, parsley, green onions, oil, uh, yellow pepper, and a little bit of mayo, all blended together. And also a little bit of milk to thin it out. But it's, it's got a really nice taste that is gonna really complement the, uh, the pork. And I guess it's, Unlike anything else you've probably tried before, right? It's, it's got its own flavor to it. Thank you.